Hi, so we're going to continue on with looking at ASME code calculations. And in our previous segments, what we looked at was calculating the required thickness or the maximum pressure for cylindrical parts. So tubes, pipes, drums, headers, etc. In this section, what we're going to look at is calculating the required thickness for some of the ends of those pressure parts. So we call them heads, and we have a couple different types of heads and a couple different variations that we look at in this section. So first of all, we have two different types of heads that we need to be able to calculate, and let's take a look at the differences. So the first one is what we would consider to be a hemispherical head, and it is a very round shape, so a perfect sphere other than it's only half. So a hemisphere is half of a sphere, and it's a very round shape. We also have a flatter type of head, which we call a dished head. So one where we have a more uh, uh, flat profile, and what it looks like is a couple different radiuses. We have a more extreme bend to it, and then after that, we have a flatter profile. Okay, We're going to start our calculations with dished heads um, because ASME code has them listed first. So if we go to page 6 of your handout, uh, what you have is a section on dished heads, PG 29.1. So previously we were in 27, which was our cylindrical vessels. Now we're into 29. And down at the bottom, we have a section on dished heads. And what it says is the thickness of a blank, unstayed dished head with pressure on the concave side. Okay, so some of those terms, blank, um, meaning it doesn't have any other sort of structure that's built onto it. It's just made out of a flat plate, let's call it. Um, unstayed, so it's self-supporting, so it doesn't have internal structure that's there to support it or hold the structure. Um, dished, we learned that term. Um, and the pressure on the concave side, so the pressure is acting from the inside, pushing out towards the, the rounded surface. Okay. And we have an equation, and this equation looks pretty easy. Uh, the thickness, T, is equal to 5 times PL pressure times L which is a radius, and we'll talk about that in a minute, um, divided by 4.8 times S, the maximum stress from our tables, and then W, that weld joint strength reduction factor from that uh, table 26. So we have a fairly easy equation. Um, the thing that you should always worry about when you have an easy equation in ASME code is that there's probably lots of clauses and lots of little places where that equation can be modified in terms of some paragraphs that talk about ways it'll be modified. And this is the case um, primarily when we have manholes. So if we have a manhole or other access opening cut into the side, we have a bunch of clauses that start to come into play. Okay, But we're going to go through all of those clauses in the code, and I'll outline which ones uh, are affected with a manhole. Okay, so on page 7, you have a whole series of extra clauses. And we're going to go through them and make sense of them and hopefully put them into plain English. So 29.2, the radius to which a head is dished shall be not greater than the outside diameter of flanged portion of the head where the two radii are used. The longer shall be taken as the value of L in the equation. Okay, and the key thing out of this really is that if we have two different radiuses, so we have a sh more uh, tighter radius, I guess here, which does sort of the end of the pressure vessel uh, or the or the uh, the head, and then we have a longer radius which allows it to have that dished kind of flatter portion. Um, when we use our calculations, we have to use a radius and it says we should use the flattest portion, or the radius for that, or in that case, the largest radius. So 
your L value would be the largest radius uh, to which it is dished. We have another clause here, 29.3. Okay, so this is one of the manhole clauses. Um, so we have a head that's dished to a segment of a sphere. Um, so a dished head with a flanged in manhole or access opening. The thickness shall be increased by not less than 15% of the required thickness for a blank head computed by the above formula but in no case less than three millimeters additional thickness over a blank head. So what this is, is that if we put a manhole into a head or other access opening, we're gonna weaken the head. So we have to add some extra thickness. And we have two different ways that we're gonna calculate that. We either add 15% or we add three millimeters. And so the way that we would, kind of read this statement is if we have an opening larger than six inches or essentially we have a manhole or an access opening on the head, the thickness must be increased. And we increase it by the larger value of either three millimeters as a minimum or else 15% additional thickness. So we'll have to make a decision on those, which one we go with, but we gotta increase the thickness. We also have PG 29.5. So where we have a dished head, meaning we have uh, a this L value, so that, that larger radius, and we have a manhole. So dished head with manhole. What we have to do is make sure that we have a certain ratio with the L to the diameter. Okay, and what it says is we sh shall be at l the the thickness of the head with a flange and manhole opening shall be at least that found by making L equal to 80% of the outside diameter of the head with the added thickness for the manhole. Okay, so at least that by making L equal to 80%. All right, so here's how we look at this. If we have a manhole on a head, uh, a dished head in this case, we want to check this L to D ratio. So we're going to take the radius to, that it's dished, that L value, and we want to divide it by D, the diameter of the, the head. And we're going to check that level or the, the, the value of that. So if L divided by D is greater than or equal to 80% or 0 0.8, we're gonna leave L unchanged. So the L value we have is good. If that ratio L divided by D is less than 0 0.8, then what we have to do is we're gonna have to change our L value. So we're gonna artificially increase our L value and the L value that we're gonna set it at is 0 0.8 times the diameter. So 0 0.8 D. And that's going to be our new L value when we do our calculations. We have one final clause to look at in this section, PG 29.6. And it says no head, except for a full hemispherical head, that's the only exception, shall be of a lesser thickness than the, that required for a seamless shell of the same diameter. So we have to look at the area that it would attach to and get an idea of what thickness is required there if it was a seamless shell. And when we calculate our dished thickness, we want to double check to make sure it is at least as thick as the shell that it would attach to. Okay, so we have a whole bunch of stuff. In the next section, we'll go through a few sample questions and we'll try to piece some of these clauses together and understand where we need to apply them.